everyone. Welcome to my channel, um, Soul Shine Mama. Um, if you're new here, my name is Crystal and I am a homeschool mom um, to one little guy. He is 11 and we just started homeschooling um, a couple years ago. I pulled him out in fourth grade and uh, we started with the Classical Conversations community um, where we live. And um, what I'm going to be going over with you today is the Essentials Student Binder that I set up for him and all of the students that I was tutoring last year. Um, I didn't tutor the whole year. I kind of started out and with my work full time and homeschooling him, you know, by myself. Um, it was just a little much um, learning all of the things as I was trying to teach them and um, the person that was originally going to tutor that I had stepped in for was able to step back into that role. So um, I did get started and um, I did uh, tutor for part of the time. So I was the one that kind of set up the binders and um, what I ended up setting up really worked well for us and I had a lot of other um, parents tell me how helpful the binders were. Um, the way that I set up our student binders is so it's like an in-class and an at-home binder so it worked for both and could kind of go between um, and I'll just go ahead and show you. I've already redone our cover so um, this is last year's. I haven't finished redoing the inside yet but I did pull out the front cover from last year. Um, it looked just like this, except medieval history was our, um, what cycle we were on for cycle two, and then also what we used for our writing. So we had a beautiful picture of a castle. Um, this year it's US history um, and we chose um, Zion National Park in Utah to put a beautiful picture of that on the front of our essentials cover. And also, um, last year I've changed this. Um, it was just our EEL, which is our essentials of the English language, and um, math games and writing. Uh, and that's, you know, just standard like classical conversations essentials. Um, I have decided this year we are not going to be with the group, um, but I am going to continue to do my essentials um, English grammar at home with um, my son. So this looks a little different because I'm going to be doing, um, like I say, it's something a little bit different at home um, this year. And uh, I'm actually going to go over that in another video. Um, what curriculum we have chosen for sixth grade, how I'm setting up his binder, um, for our at home with our little different routine. Um, but essentially this was it. So if you want to set up a binder, whether you're tutoring or, you know, if your tutors aren't setting up binders for you guys, um, this just works really well to go between, um, class and home, um, how this is set up. And uh, we had just added the cycle and the year and the student name. And so this year, this is what it's going to look like for us. Um, and the growth mindset, I just found this little printable on Etsy and added the scripture to the bottom. And it was just, essentials can be tough. It is a lot to learn. Um, I have learned so much. And I just want to say, you want to learn something, teach it. And uh, I was definitely came out um, knowing so much more than I did when I went in. Um, but yeah, just reminders that, you know, things can be tough and positive ways to look at things. So um, that was just a little extra thing I did for the kiddos. So, okay, we're going to get inside the binder now. So the first thing that when we open, um, this was something else personally that I did that wasn't something I included for my students. Um, but we did our weekly planner like this. This is just a printable that I found online and it was very, very helpful. And I'll show you our messy copy that, um, I had for week 23. Um, so basically we just filled out what we were doing for the week, each of our little subjects, Monday's our community day. Um, 
and then just for each subject what we were doing and he had this in his binder so he could look um, what he had to do for his essentials um, for his writing and his reading this is week 23 and we were so this is just something that I found super helpful that worked really really well for getting us through the week and I just I did it of course each week and let's see this is something you could probably find online. I think I Googled it. And um, if not, it's super simple. You can make one um, yourself. But that setup worked really nice. And for the inside pocket, we started out with our small analytical task sheet. But in essentials, as you grow, your sentences are going to get longer. So I ended up later on making this larger version that um, another mama had created, um, I cannot remember what her name is, um, Rhodes, Rhodes maybe, um, if I remember I'll stick that in the um, details, but you have your larger analytical task sheet for your bigger sentences, um, and then we had room for diagramming, and then we had also room for our other tasks for modifying our sentences so that was all there so sometimes we use these in class whenever we have the students working on a sentence or write a sentence on the board and have them um, do their analytical tasks so it was handy to have and then with this blank you could use it for math you could use it for figuring you could use it for whatever you had kind of a blank piece um, there so that was just extra and also at home you had it all right here if you were doing your um, sentences at home you would just have it and you could use your dry erase and wipe it clean. As far as what we did in our little pocket, we had a dry erase, uh, I can't even think, like a little cube. Um, I also had a little wipey. We had a couple different color markers and he has a, a pencil and I printed out the two-sided question confirmation bookmarks for them to have. Um, they were very handy. We ended up using those in class most of the time. And then what I did was I went ahead and printed out all of the completed charts. So like literally all of the charts, A through, what is it? I can't remember, double something. Let's see, A through everything. What's the last one? I can't even remember. CC, uh, DD, so double D, there we go. Double D, that's the end. Um, and then I also, added question confirmation, a few other ways that you could do it because some find that one question confirmation works better for them than the other. So there was a few different options for parents and kiddos, whatever they felt was easiest for them. This one's very extensive and like two-sided. So I also did an example for first years like of how the analytical task sheet would look um, when completed and um, the sentence modifications. So all of that was there and I'll explain real quick. The reason that I chose to put the um, completed charts in here, because when we're going over the charts in class, um, talking about charts, telling the kids to get their charts out, um, they're right here, everybody's got them. And at home, when you get your essentials packet, you know, you have three different binders. You have your curriculum, and then you have your student binder or manual, and then your solutions manual. So in your student manual, you already have all of the blank charts um, there. So you don't really need blank charts. When you go home, they can pull this out, and if they're copying, they'll have their charts they can copy from right here, and then they have their other binder, and they also have their editing in the other binder. Um, in blank analytical task sheets in there if they needed it. But that was, we're gonna use these in class um, to go over for them to review. And um, so that was, that was why we did the fully complete charts instead of the blank charts in this folder. So we have that, we had the examples of the question confirmations and the an example of the completed analytical task. And then next what we had was weeks at a glance. Um, so I put this in here and we had our chart or our little spreadsheet here. Um, let me show you. 
we got our spreadsheet of our schedule and this has everything um, for writing and for your essentials and um, this is awesome to have and I just you know we had double-sided and it tells you everything that you need to know so you have your weeks at a glance and what I had also done um, on the onward easing, easing, easing um, on the CC Connected there are weekly sheets that I believe they're called and it's got it's like a little agenda page where you can check off everything that needs to be done for each day. It's got your vocabulary words, it's got writing, it's got chart tracking where they can mark their charts um, as they do them. The only problem we had, um, and a lot of communities may run into this problem, the IEW program, the writing program we use, I wanna say there's 30 something weeks or there's more weeks than the 24 that Classical Conversations meets for. So you, we didn't go in order. We kind of moved some of the writing around and you know you have to omit some so you don't get to do them all. Um, so the problem with those weekly sheets is if your community does that, um, we got through week eight and then the writing didn't line up. So there are, other options for that. They're not necessary. If you use something like this or create something like this, you, you know what you're doing and you've also got this. So you know what you're doing here. Um, and I think some other parents have created other versions of that weekly sheet. And um, you can probably find that in the forums section on CC Connected. But I found that that worked well and we wanted to use the weekly sheets, but they only again worked for us through week eight in our community. So wasn't something that we ended up keeping in here. So we have our weeks at a glance. And then I also included um, our vocabulary. So we have our essentials grammar vocabulary. It's two sides. And then um, we also um, added the vocabulary for our writing program for the IEW. So the kids have their vocabulary words here. They can just mark off each week as they go through their vocabulary words. Um, if they need to reference them, they're right here. And then the next section was our math games because of course we're gonna be playing our math games in class. And so this next section just includes a lot of different math games. We had our multiplication charts um, for multiplication four in a row. Um, we had another version. We had racing shapes game, the area game, multiplication as well. Our snake game, this is of course a class favorite. If you guys have played, you probably know. Multiplication squares, uh, number knockout. This is a classical conversations specific game. And then I just found these on Etsy and printed them out for my kiddos. Um, it's a beautiful, vibrant color um, multiplication square, but I opted for the black and white at the time because I was printing out a lot of them for class and um, colored ink was running out. So they're black and white, but you can, if you find these on Etsy, they're beautiful um, when printed in color. And I think I'm gonna do that for his binder this year, just so. We'll have that since I'm only gonna be printing one. And then we had our powers and squares and cubes. And then our squares, cubes, and square roots. Just helps for when we're playing number knockout or any other games. And let's see. Then I went ahead and was extra because I like to be like extra sometimes and very detailed. And I printed out and typed up all of the rules um, for all of the different math games. This way, whether we're in class or the kiddos are at home and you guys are trying to do your math games together with siblings or just with your child, um, you have the rules and how to play and all of the things there for you. So um, I did that and included that. And then the next section was our writing helps. And this was again, this is from uh, last year from cycle two from medieval history and then what I had in there, details, just to help the kids say, okay, these are our dress ups. These are our sentence openers. Um, those are mainly first and second year um, 
focus and then the the greater focus as you move on for second years maybe third or fourth year some people do get um, more than three years your more advanced um, dress ups and decorations and um, the triple extensions so they're there included um, and then this is breaking down um, all of your dress ups and each one and the details of each dress up what it needs what makes it work what makes it a dress up what makes it not a dress up some examples um, so that's there all the dress ups and then also it goes into all of the different sentence openers so we have all the sentence openers also and I did put them all on sheets just to keep them safe and protected so they would have them and the reason I did that um, is because after our first year, we had trouble, like I had to mark in my writing book, like with little tabs, like this is where the sentence opener is and this is where this is. I mean, there's an, a table of contents at the front that tells you this, but I kept having to flip through the book and flip through the book and, and we're trying to do the writing and then we're trying to flip through the book and find the details of what the dress ups are and the sentence openers. So. It was super helpful to have that information on hand where we could just have it in one place. Um, so that was just uh, after my first year trying to navigate all this, coming in actually in the middle or a little bit late in the year, not quite the middle. Um, things that I found helpful that I didn't know or needed or would have been better to have a little more organized. And then also the last thing for writing, I just included the list of banned um, words and then all of these different examples. We have lists for LY adverbs, um, just different word lists, proofreading um, and abbreviations because when you're doing your writing, um, those are gonna be things that are helpful or your editing or if the, when your parent, when you guys edit and um, they need to look back having that, you guys have it here, they have it here. And then the last pocket I had on the back side there was just for him to be able to put his completed uh, papers once he was done. So once he got everything completed and printed everything out, he was able to put it here. And then we just had some scratch paper in the end, just if we needed to write anything out in class or anytime he needed to jot something down, um, we did that here and uh, see a nice little boom uh, sketch. But. This worked super, super well for us. And again, just a way to kind of make it streamlined where you can take this to class and use it and you can take it home and use it. Um, of course, this next year's that I'm gonna be putting together, like tomorrow probably, um, when we get back home. And you may notice we're not at home. We are actually in a hotel room. I have the nice air conditioner here and the hotel beds um he actually has to have surgery in the morning and i needed to get this video done so uh we decided i would just go ahead and do it um while he showered for the night and um he has actually had an acl reconstruction when he was eight eight almost nine um he had a football injury and uh tore his acl and broke his elbow and so just after turning nine, he had to have a full reconstruction. Um, and his doctor um, that had done this special pediatric way of doing it, he had created, um, I think it's been about 13 years now that he's been doing it. And it's all gone well. He's had like success with everyone. Ours has been successful as well. Everything has been great. Everything is, good his knee is amazing um we have to go back every year just to kind of follow up and the only issue that we've had and this is the first time that he said this has happened um when they do the surgery they do still have to put a screw into the tibia to um attach that new tendon that's going to turn into a ligament because the body is amazing um so they do that and then they tack up on the knee or the kind of up in the knee where they're tacking the other end with like a little metal tack. It's like a little rectangle piece, his is. Well, that came off. That's never happened before, um, he said. So we are the first in the 13 years to have this piece come off and be in his knee. 
So it's caused his knee to lock up a few times and be just extremely painful. And um, it usually takes two to three to four days to resolve to where he's, you know, able to move around good and move his leg a little more normally. So it's definitely something we had to get out and that's gonna be happening in the morning. So that's why we are in a hotel room and um, everything's gonna go great. Um, but yeah, essentials, getting, them, getting the video done. It's been a while since I've seen you guys and uh, I know I have some major gaps in my um, essentials videos that I was creating for you guys. And my plan is to fill those gaps in as we go throughout the year. I will try to get them done just before maybe that week um, or that week of for reviews for everyone. Um, but that is my goal. My goal was to do it in the summer, but summer gets crazy and uh, life had other plans than for me to be finishing up my videos. So I will be getting those done soon for you guys. And uh, thanks for being with me. If you guys have any questions, comments, I know there's so many people that have done different binders. I hadn't seen one exactly like this and I researched and researched and researched before I did my binder. And then I finally just took a step back and said, okay, like, what did we need? Like, what worked for us? What were we lacking? And how can I make this simple and not too much and um, still enough? And this is what we came up with. And again, I hope this is super helpful. If you have any questions, comments, if you just want to say hello, um, you can leave a comment down below. Um, like this video if you found it helpful. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks again for being with me. All right, bye.